Wild pigs have always been a major threat to the U.S. agriculture. Millions of wild boars invade the farms, causing billions of dollars in damage. Forcing farmers to take extreme measures to deal with these species. The most expensive method in the United States is being used. Let's go to the fields with Mouse Farm to see the process. Wild pigs in the United States are not only an invasive species, but also a major source of damage to the agriculture, livestock, and the natural environment. The consequences they bring can reduce agricultural productivity, pose a risk of disease transmission to the livestock, and affect the entire ecosystem. In crop farms, wild boars become annoying rivals of farmers because of their toxic gnawing behavior. They destroy crops, eat seeds, tubers, and fruits, causing heavy damage to agricultural production. This not only reduces farmers' income, but also affects the food supply. Furthermore, wild boars also cause soil erosion, damage irrigation systems, causing soil erosion and reduce soil quality. This greatly affects the stability of the agricultural environment, reducing the ability of soil to regenerate for crops. This animal has omnivorous habits and can consume many different types of food, from plants such as plant seeds, other tubers, fruits, to small animals such as insects, and mice. Wild boars use their snouts and feed to dig in the ground, search for food, and sometimes scrape the ground to create a shelter. On livestock farms, Wild boars attack the livestock, eating their food and drinking water. This is not only affecting the health and condition of pits, but also increases the risk of infection with dangerous infectious diseases. Wild boars are active mainly at night. When it's dark and few people are active, this increases the likelihood of encountering them especially in rural areas and primary forests. The greatest threat not only comes from the attack and corrosion that wild boars carry, but also from their ability to be a source of disease transmission. The wild boars can carry many dangerous infectious diseases such as African swine fever, swine tuberculosis, swine fever, and foot and mouth disease. These diseases not only threaten the health of pets, but can also spread to humans, endangering the entire community. Hunting feral hogs by planes in the United States is an effective strategy for controlling and preventing invasive species. Implemented since the 1980s, this method has become increasingly popular and widely used in recent years. The cost of hunting by plane is not small, 
ranging from $1,500 to $5,000 per flight. However, this cost includes not only the rental of the plane, but also the cost of hiring hunters, the cost of ammunition, and many other costs. Hunting by planes offers many important advantages. First of all, this method is highly effective, capable of destroying a large number of wild boars in a short time. This helps minimizing their impact on the environment and also protects farmers from damage caused by invasive species. In particular, the use of aircraft and hunting also ensures safety for people and pets. By flying at a high altitude, the aircraft avoids wild boar attacks, reduces the risk of accidents, and at the same time, increases the accuracy in placing bullets. When conducting aerial hunting in the United States, obtaining a license is important to ensure safety and regulatory compliance. These licenses include wild boars hunting licenses, pilot licenses, and hunting equipment licenses. A wild boar hunting license is one of the most important steps to ensure that hunting takes place according to regulations. This requires a solid understanding of hunting rules, as well as the ability to identify wild boars and manage the hunting environment. A pilot license is a necessary condition to ensure that the operator has the ability to control the aircraft safely and accurately. This is important to avoid unwanted accidents during hunting and ensures the safety of both the pilot and those participating in the activity. A hunting license is another essential factor especially when using firearms from an aircraft. This ensures that the operator has the skills to use hunting equipment correctly and safely, while complying with relevant legal regulations. Crop fields and orchards are often the primary foraging areas for feral pigs, making them easy to access and control. Airplanes make this more convenient, increasing the ability to locate and hunt them. Jungle areas, where wild boars often hide as well, are also a prime target for aerial hunting. The aircraft's flexibility in locating and accessing hard-to-reach areas helps improve the effectiveness of hunting activities. Thanks to the control measures, including aerial hunting, the wild boar population in the United States has decreased significantly by 2023. The population is estimated to have decreased from 5 million in 2000 to about 2.5 million. Despite significant achievements, wild boars continue to threaten the environment and pose a risk to people. Maintaining and developing control measures is important to ensure a balance between the survival of this animal and the protection of her habitat. Therefore, controlling and preventing wild boar's invasion remains an issue that requires continuous attention and action.
How do you feel about this measure? Please, let us know all your opinions and thoughts down below in the comment section of this video. And for now, allow me to invite you to continue watching the rest of the video. Let's continue watching together. Feral pigs, an animal that causes much damage in the United States, have existed in agriculture and their habitat since the 16th century, when they were introduced to this country by the Europeans. Since then, the number of feral pigs has continuously increased. and became a serious problem for farmers and local communities. To control this situation, many methods and measures have been applied, from traditional methods to modern technology methods. Hunting and trapping are the two most common methods a feral pig control. Although for it being effective in some cases, but both methods have their drawbacks. Hunting feral pigs can lead to reduction in feral pig populations, but it is not always effective in the long term. Hunting can cause pain and injuries to wild pigs, and if not done carefully, they can cause unwanted accidents. Trapping is another method, but it is also not entirely effective and has its own disadvantages. Traps require careful preparation, and the location must be determined approximately. Furthermore, traps can restrict feral pigs' movements and lead to stress and anxiety. The feral pig population has been increasing. Feral pigs not only cause great damage to agriculture, but also affect property and the living environment. Statistics show that damage is estimated at billions of dollars each year caused by feral pigs. They often destroy crops and animal feed, threatening the country's precious food supply. Another serious consequence that feral pigs cause is the ability to transmit diseases to livestock and humans. They can be victors for infectious diseases such as tapeworm, tetanus, and stunting. This creates great risks for the livestock industry and farmers, especially in maintaining the health and productivity of livestock herds. In addition, Feral pigs also threaten road traffic safety. Every year, there are dozens of traffic accidents caused by feral pigs entering the streets. This is especially dangerous for road users and especially drivers, as they may not be able to react in time to the sudden appearance of wild pigs on the road. Because of these limitations, researchers and governments have made efforts to research and develop more effective feral pig control methods. One of those methods is to use modern technology to track and locate feral pigs. Using GPS systems and tracking tools, feral pigs can be attacked and captured more effectively. In 
In addition, research and development of non-invasive approaches, such as insecticide injections, is also a notable way to control feral pigs without having to deal with the limitations of conventional methods. One of the potential methods to control feral pigs is insecticide injection. Insecticides can be used to prevent the growth of feral pigs by reducing the number of insects they depend on. However, the use of insecticides requires careful consideration. Insecticides can cause environmental pollution and affect other insects, affecting the natural balance in the ecosystem. Therefore, it is necessary to implement effective and sustainable use of this medicine while monitoring its impact on the environment. In all feral swine control programs can help people better understand the impact of feral pigs on agriculture, the environment and traffic safety, These educational activities can also provide guidance on how to recognize and report feral swine occurrences. To find more effective methods of feral pig control, we need financial support for research projects in biology, technology, and environmental management to develop new solutions These studies may focus on optimizing existing control methods or developing new technologies and techniques to minimize the impact of feral swine. Combining border controls, public education and research goes a long way in the fight against feral swine. We need to come up with a high level of understanding and cooperation to protect our agriculture and the environment. Plus ensuring traffic safety from the negative effects of these animals. Overall, feral pig control requires coordination and efforts from farmers, researchers and governments Effective and sustainable methods must be found to control and minimize the impact of this animal on agriculture, the environment and traffic safety. Only through close collaboration and innovative research can we solve the serious problem of feral swines in the United States. Feral pigs are a serious problem in the United States, causing damage to the agriculture and the environment. According to estimates by the United States Department of Agriculture, USDA, feral pigs cause about 2.5 billion USD in damage to the agricultural industry each year. Wild pigs are omnivorous, eating anything they can find, including crops, fruit, small animals and even garbage. They can destroy crops, pollute water sources, and transmit diseases to other animals. Wild pigs have the ability to reproduce quickly and adapt to new living environments. They can travel hundreds of miles in search of food and breeding grounds.
Some crops that are not attractive to feral pigs include cabbage, kale, mustard, greens, and lettuce. Farmers can grow these crops to minimize their attraction to feral pigs. This not only reduces the risk of feral pigs entering the farm, but also helps protecting crops from their destruction. Using plants that are not attractive to feral pigs can be an important part of an overall strategy to protect farms and maintain balance in the agricultural ecosystem. In addition, using natural protection measures such as attracting other wild animals to act as natural opponents for feral pigs can also be useful. This can help reduce feral pig pressure on farms and keep the ecosystem in the area more balanced. Combining various measures can increase farm performance and ensure the sustainability of agricultural production in the future. Fences are an important part of protecting farms from feral pigs. Feral pigs can cause extensive damage to crops and agricultural facilities, and building a sturdy fence system is an effective way to keep them out. Farmers have many options for building fences Barbed wire, steel mesh, and concrete are all popular options. The fence should be at least six feet high to prevent feral pigs from being able to jump over or over it. At the same time, it also needs to be buried at least two feet underground to prevent feral pigs from digging and entering from underground. Investing in proper fencing can help protect your farm from feral swine and ensure the safety of your crops and livestock. This is an important part of managing and protecting your agricultural farm from the challenge of the natural environment. Traps are one of the common methods placed in areas frequented by feral pigs. When a wild pig enters the trap, the trap will automatically close, capturing the animal in the trap, helping to control the number of wild pigs and minimizing damage to the farm. Bait traps are another option, often placed in areas with food for feral swine. This trap uses the smell of food to attract feral pigs and then captures them when they enter the trap. Additionally, electric traps can also be used, which use electricity to stun wild pigs. This is an effective method of controlling feral pigs. However, it needs to be carefully done to ensure operator safety. Using traps combined with other measures, such as feral pig resistant planting and farm management, will help farmers protect their products and maintain agricultural sustainability. Hunting dogs can be used to chase feral pigs off farms. They're trained to do this job effectively and safely. Hunting dogs have great strength and tracking ability, allowing them to move quickly and chase wild pigs out of the farm areas without endangering farmers or other animals. The use of hunting dogs is a beneficial solution for maintaining security and safety on the farm, while minimizing potential between humans and wildlife. In this case, 
hunting is the most effective method to defeat feral pigs. However, it can also pose risks to people and environment. Hunting wild pigs sometimes requires the use of hunting equipment or other means to ensure effectiveness However, the use of hunting equipment can pose a serious risk of accident to those participating in hunting activities, especially when carried out in areas near residential areas. Furthermore, the use of hunting equipment can also cause loud noise and disturbance, causing disturbance to the community and surrounding environment. Therefore, in managing the appearance of feral pigs, farmers need to consider the effectiveness and risks of hunting measures. At the same time, it is necessary to implement reasonable prevention and management measures to minimize the harm caused by feral pigs to farms and environment. Authorities have implemented community education programs to raise people's awareness about the harmful effects of feral pigs and feral pig control measures. However, controlling feral pigs is a complex and difficult problem. Wild pigs are intelligent and agile animals. They can adapt to new living environments and find food in hard to reach places. Therefore, coordination of many parties including the government, non-governmental organizations and people is needed to solve this problem. Wild pigs were introduced to America in the 19th century as food for humans and animals. However, they quickly proliferate and become invasive species. According to the United States Environmental Protection Agency (EPA), wild boars cause up to $2.5 billion in annual damage to crops and fruit trees. They can also transmit diseases to humans and pets, such as tapeworm disease, E. coli disease, and brucellosis. They damage areas with beautiful landscapes and pollute some water sources. These puddles are polluted. If farmers here don't put cameras in these areas, we really don't know the reason for the water pollution. They travel in groups of about a dozen wild boars, which carry parasites that cause disease in humans, such as tapeworms, roundworms, and Toxoplasma gondii. It can even spread to other animals. Wild boar meat can be foul-smelling, especially as it feeds on omnivores such as insects, animal carcasses, and garbage. In urban or rural garbage areas, it is easy to see herds of wild boars eating garbage. Some people caught it and recorded it on video. 
This smell may make some people not want to eat wild boar meat. This wild boar was eating the carcass of a small deer. They eat everything they see, so the quality of meat on their bodies will also be absorbed and affected. Wild boar is an expensive source of protein. Wild boars are wild species and hunting and harvesting their meat is more expensive than raising domestic pigs. To get them, hunters had to learn a lot and practice hunting. They had to spend a lot of money to participate in wild boar hunting trips by multiple helicopters. There are many ways to cook wild boar meat, but there are many things that you need to pay attention to here. The fat on the wild boar meat is quite foul, so you should remove it before cooking. This meat will be grilled. Let's see how this chef marinates the spices. A layer of spices is sprinkled evenly on the surface of the meat, and the meat is put on the grill. This meat is quite thick, so it will take about 30 to 45 minutes to bake. After about 45 minutes, the meat is removed and spices are added again. This time, the meat will be grilled on foil. You need to add honey, brown sugar, butter and bourbon, depending on your preference. Next, the meat will be placed and spices added, as in the lower layer, then wrapped tightly with layers of foil. This meat will be left overnight. To ensure safety when eating wild boar meat, you should cook it at a temperature of about 160 degrees Celsius. At this temperature, the amount of bacteria in the meat will stop working, which is safe for your health. The rapid urbanization process in Europe makes food sources for wild boars scarce. They have moved to urban areas to feed. On the streets, people see them walking, land lots and flower beds were dug up. They were very excited when they encountered wild boars on the road. Europeans often have the habit of feeding wild boars, causing them to reach urban areas faster. They didn't know that they were bringing danger to themselves. A bad thing happened. An exercise bike rider was attacked by a wild boar and seriously injured. Police and experts have begun to investigate and deal with this aggressive animal. The UK government has taken the innovative decision to plant fruit trees and forests to create a steady food supply for wild boars, an important goal in controlling the situation. They invaded the city. The scheme has been rolled out in many famous UK woodlands, including Hyde Park, Richmond Park, and Wimbledon Common. Apples and pomegranates and other fruit trees have been planted by people 
and the government over the years, with the goal of creating a natural food source for wild boars. This has been an effective method in reducing wild boars flocking to trees in search of food, helping to protect both animals and the public square. Although this program has had some notable successes, it is not without its limitations. The cost to plant and maintain these fruit trees take quite a bit of financial and human resources, especially managing and protecting them from damage from wild boars. Furthermore, the length of the program can make it difficult to maintain a sustainable food supply. The government needs to continue to review and improve these aspects to ensure that the fruit tree planting program will continue to play an important role in controlling wild boars' invasion in the city. A new and effective measure has been introduced here. With the construction of electric fences and to protect farms and residential areas in the UK, where the wild boar problem has also caused quite a serious impact. Farm owners have chosen the electric fences as a safety solution. These electric fences are discreetly installed around farms and residences. They use solar energy to operate and have warning signs for surrounding people. This helps ensure the safety of people and their property, while also preventing the intrusion of harmful wild boars. In addition to implementing these security measures, people in the UK are also actively spreading awareness about the dangers of wild boars. Through community meetings, media campaigns, and experience sharing, they have raised awareness about the danger this animal possesses and how to deal with it. This has helped build together a community that exists in harmony with the natural environment and a way of life that is easier from the presence of wild boars. Since the incident that occurred on December 18, 2019, at Bois de Vincennes Park, one of the largest parks in Paris, French society has been shaken by the unexpected event. A woman named Marie Christine, 62 years old, was walking in the park when she was attacked by a wild boar and seriously injured her leg. This incident not only caused disruption in Marie Christine's daily life, but also caused great concern and anxiety in the French public opinion. The French government quickly responded by increasing measures to prevent wild boars from invading the city. The combination of police forces and hunting groups became necessary to ensure community safety. They began conducting an extensive investigation and asked surrounding people about the presence of wild boars in the area. Police officers, veterinary experts, and hunters work closely to identify and search for the wild boars responsible for the attack. They deployed special hunting teams equipped with hunting dogs and conducted a professional hunt to capture them. This was a strange and challenging incident for police and veterinary experts but their efforts kept the community safe and at the same time, they helped preventing wild boars from causing harm.
they gather mainly in harvest season fields. A wild boar rushed into the corn harvester, causing the harvesting process to immediately stop. The German government has been working to find affordable solutions to contain the wild boar population. In the harvested corn fields, you will see quite a few hunters looking for wild boars. They divided themselves into areas so that no wild boar could escape. Wherever the harvester goes, the wild boars smell the noise and move there. It is quite a difficult job when you have to wait a few hours until the wild boar runs out of the corn area. The hunter began his work. With each shot, he could easily take down one wild boar. At the end of the day, they will harvest a wild boar in return. Look at the hard work at the end of the day. These giant pigs have consumed a lot of people's agricultural products. There are many measures to prevent the growth of wild boar populations. Which method do you find most effective? Please comment below in the comment section to let us know. Degrades soil quality and pollutes water sources. This method offers many advantages, such as the ability to reach hard to reach areas, being able to shoot multiple animals at once, and being effective in controlling wild boars' populations. However, the high cost and the potential danger to hunters and wildlife are disadvantages to consider. This method is often practiced in agricultural areas, such as wheat, corn, and vegetable fields, where wild boars' densities are high, creating favorable conditions for defeating them. Helicopter hunters will use lead bullets to hunt wild boars. Lead bullets have good penetrating abilities, helping to defeat wild boars quickly and effectively. Each hunt can yield 20 to 30 wild boars, depending on the density of wild boars in the area. This poses certain challenges and requires care to ensure safety and effectiveness. Safety always comes first, and hunters need to follow the rules, which include wearing a seatbelt, not standing up, while the helicopter is in flight and following the pilot's instructions. Helicopter hunting of wild boars is not only an effective population control method, but also an exciting challenge with professionalism and special attention to safety. This method makes a positive contribution to the efforts of protecting the agriculture and habitats from the negative impacts of wild boars.
Hunting wild boars at night is also one of the methods used by Florida residents to deal with invasive wild boars populations. This requires careful preparation and exceptional hunting skills to face the challenge of hunting in low light conditions. Before starting, hunters need to be fully equipped with tools and equipment, including hunting equipment, flashlights, headlights, and other equipment. At the same time, they need to learn night hunting skills, including how to use flashlights and headlights effectively, as well as accurate shooting techniques in low light conditions. The procedure involves arriving at the hunting area at night, using a flashlight or headlamp to illuminate the target. Once the location is determined, the hunter will shoot down the wild boar using hunting tools. Good observation is important to detect wild boars in low light conditions. Using hunting aids, or joining a group is very important. Teammates can support each other during the hunt. Hunting wild boars at night has many advantages. It makes it easier for hunters to find and kill the wild boars, especially when they are active at night. According to the Florida Department of Natural Resources Conservation, the FWC, wild boars' numbers have decreased by about 20% since 2015, partly due to nighttime hunting methods. Hunting is still one of the best ways to deal with invasive wild boar populations. Other measures need to be put in place to minimize the danger to those involved. In particular, it doesn't cause any pain or injuries to the wild boars. What measures do you find most effective and efficient in controlling invasive wild boar populations? Please leave all your comments and thoughts down below in the comment section. Hunting feral hogs with bows and arrows has become a fun and exciting activity in the U.S., but requires strict compliance with regulations and permits. In many states in the U.S., people who want to participate in wild boars hunting season must have a license from environmental management agencies. This helps ensuring that hunting takes place according to regulations and does not harm wild boars populations. The wild boar hunting season in the U.S. usually takes place from October to January, depending on the geographical region regulations of each state. During this time, Hunters equip their bows, arrows, and necessary equipment, preparing for the hunt that awaits. The number of wild boars allowed to be hunted in the U.S. often depends on each state's regulation. In order to maintain balance in the wild boar population and protect the environment, Environmental management agencies set limits on the number of wild boar that can be hunted each season.
For example, in the state of California, each hunter can hunt one wild boar during hunting season. However, the data is subject to change and changes from time to time. Some states, such as Texas and Florida, are famous for their diverse and exciting feral hog hunting areas. In these places, people often have the opportunity to hunt wild boars at a fairly high limit. The southern and western states of the United States also have strong traditions of wild boar hunting and attract hunters from all over. But not only regulations on the number of wild pigs, regulations on size and limits between pig breeds are also very important. This helps protect wild boar genetic diversity and maintain natural balance. They must also participate in hunting safety courses to ensure that they understand safety rules and regulations regarding the use of hunting equipment. The U.S. feral hog hunting season runs from October to January to ensure that hunters have a good change of encountering feral hogs during the fall and winter, when they are more frequent and easier to track. The numbers of wild boars allowed to be hunted, the process of setting up traps is quite simple. Using large nets placed in strategic locations where wild boars often operate. Usually, trap nets are placed on paths and trails that wild boars often use. When wild boars enter this area and sit on the trap net, the net will close and trap them. According to statistics from the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention CDC, each year about 2 million wild boars are trapped in the U.S. This is an impressive number showing that setting up net traps to trap wild boars is effective in controlling the number of wild boars. Like all solutions, setting net traps also comes with pros and cons. One obvious advantage is that it is effective in controlling wild boar populations especially when their numbers increase significantly. In addition, setting knit traps costs less than some other measures. After successfully harvesting wild boars, the process of handling and processing wild boars' meat becomes an important step. First, the wild boar will be thoroughly cleaned, removing any dirt and unnecessary internal organs. Next, the wild boar will be marinated with spices, usually a delicate combination of salt, pepper, chili, garlic, onions, and other spices. Depending on your state, This helps the wild boar meat absorb its delicious flavor. The process of grilling wild boar is usually done on a fire or a charcoal grill. Wild boar's meat will be placed on the grill and grilled for several hours. The grilling process requires meticulousness you need to turn all, all sides evenly 
to ensure the meat is cooked evenly and the flavors are absorbed evenly. During the grilling process, wild boar meat will become soft with crispy skin and attractive color. Finally, when the wild boar meat is cooked and has a beautiful golden color, you can mix the sauce and apply it evenly over the entire grilled pig body. The sauce is usually made from ingredients such as honey, cooking oil, sweet and sour fish sauce, garlic and other spices. The sauce is the factor that determines the final flavor of the dish, creating a layer of rich, delicious flavor. So since these solutions have been affecting in preventing the growth of colonies of some invasive species, do you believe in any other better solution? If so, please don't forget to share your comments and opinions down below, plus don't forget to share like and subscribe to support our channel with our upcoming videos and lastly don't forget to share this video with all your friends so that they can watch it and enjoy it as well